Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to make a complete analysis of the Commodore 64 PAL analog output video signal and see where and how it differs from the PAL specification. You can probably find a lot of this information online already, however, we're going to measure everything from scratch as an exercise, both for the composite and for the S-video output of the C64. In order to facilitate the analysis, I've prepared a specific color scheme to be plotted on screen, with white borders and a solid green inner frame. First of all, we're going to measure the output impedance of every video signal. This is done by measuring the difference in signal amplitude with and without an external monitor connected. This is thanks to the fact that all monitors have a known 75 ohm internal termination that creates a voltage divider with the output resistance of the C64 when connected. With the screen connected, the difference between black and white level for composite and S-Video Luma is about 700 millivolts, which is compliant with the PAL standard. The same difference jumps to 1.5 volts when the screen is disconnected, from which we can derive that both these signals have an output impedance of about 83 ohm, which is a bit higher than the expected 75 ohms. With the screen connected, the color burst amplitude on the composite output is about 270 millivolts, which matches the PAL specification. However, the color burst amplitude on the S-Video Chroma is about 700 millivolts, which is quite a bit higher than expected. With the screen disconnected, the S-Video color burst amplitude jumps to about 1 volt, from which we derive that this signal has an output impedance of about 37 ohm, which is roughly half the expected value. Composite and S-Video Luma have a black level of about 270 millivolts, just below the 300 millivolts specified by the PAL standard, but that's something that any TV or monitor can easily compensate for. The S-Video Chroma has a DC offset of about 700 millivolts, which is not important because this signal is modulated and only carries information in its high-frequency components. Now we can move on to analyzing the line structure. The length of a video line is 63.93 microseconds, which is a little lower than the standard 64 microseconds from the PAL standard. The duration of a full frame is 19.951 milliseconds, which is 312 times the duration of one line and means that the frame rate is 50.12 Hz. Like many old consoles, the C64 outputs progressive video with half the vertical resolution of interlaced PAL, so the 312 lines are just about half the standard 625 lines per frame of interlaced PAL. Looking at the horizontal synchronization, the front porch is about 2.52 microseconds long, the H-Sync Pulse is 4.56 microseconds long, and the back porch is 5.62 microseconds long, which is rather close to the PAL standard. The color burst consists of 20 sine wave cycles and lasts 4.51 microseconds crest to crest, from which we derive that the frequency of the color carrier is 4.434 MHz, which matches well the PAL standard. Interestingly, the composite color burst is slightly out of phase compared to the SPDO one. This is probably due to the fact that the color information is added to the composite signal with an RC network, which could be causing the phase shift. It's also interesting to measure the horizontal pixel rate. This can be done by measuring the duration of the active video, which is 40.6 microseconds, and dividing it by 320 pixels, which is the horizontal resolution of the C64. From these measurements, we derive that the pixel frequency is 7.88 MHz, which matches exactly the nominal value stated in the C64 service manual. When it comes to measuring the overall video bandwidth, we can get a rough estimate by measuring the rise time from black to white, which is very hard to measure correctly because of noise and distortion, but seems to be somewhere between 170 and 190 nanoseconds. The bandwidth of a first-order low-pass filter can be estimated as about 0.35 times the inverse of the rise time, which would put the video bandwidth of the C64 somewhere around 2 MHz. Next thing to do is look at the frame structure. As we measured before, the duration of a frame corresponds to the duration of 312 lines. If we look at the vertical synchronization, we can see that the C64 produces 18 half-line pulses as opposed to the standard 16 for PAL. Moreover, it only produces a single blanking line after V-Sync, which once again differs from the standard 17 blanking lines from the PAL specification. Another interesting aspect of the C64 output video is the severe crosstalk between S-Video Chroma and Luma lines. We can clearly see that the color carrier leaks into the S-Video Luma in the sections that have strong color components, while the issue disappears in the areas that have no color such as black, grey or white. 
It's also interesting to note that the color carrier leakage into the SVDO Luma seems to be aligned with the composite video rather than the SVDO Chroma, suggesting that it is in fact the composite signal that's leaking back into the Luma, though I can't be sure as I haven't investigated further. One last thing I wanted to check is what the spectrum of the composite signal looks like as a whole. So I found a game with a static and colorful background and took a long acquisition with my scope. Then I put the time domain data through a simple Python script and this is what we find. It is really hard to establish the signal bandwidth, but we can clearly see both the color information modulated at 4.4 MHz, as well as a larger harmonic at the pixel rate of 7.88 MHz. This was my complete analysis of the C64 output video signal. I hope I didn't miss anything important, but please let me know in the comments below and I'll make a follow-up video about it. Other than scientific curiosity, the reason why I performed this thorough analysis is that I intend to unearth an old project of mine, the RCD, and use the technology I developed for it to build the ultimate HDMI conversion mod for the C64, so this will be the primary focus of the coming videos. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting, thanks again for watching and see you all next time.